Hey everyone, it's Kanisha from Bold Living Today. I want to say and wish you all a happy International Peace Day. I'm super excited today about this interview I have coming up with an incredible young leader. And you know, in my work in Bold Living Today, I really focus on being an advocate for teens, helping them actualize what they want to do, amplify their boldness, and really um, showcase their expertise and how they really can lead and guide us and how being with teenagers is really not that complicated even though we like to talk about it in that way. There's some complicated areas but being with them is not that complicated. So I'm super excited to have Courtney Murphy as our youth leader guest today. She's going to tell us about her project which I know that you'll want to get involved and that you will be so impressed with her creativity, her boldness, and her passion to impact people positively. And so um, I'm gonna bring her on here shortly. We had a couple of questions from the last interview that we have, but I'm just gonna leave all this time for Courtney. And then we have Wednesday Club this upcoming Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific. I will pick up any of the questions as a carryover. So I am going to invite Courtney on now so that we can learn about her project and all the awesome stuff that she's doing. So give me one second. Here we go. I hope everybody's having a good start to the week, feeling productive, feeling relaxed and nourished. <gasps> Courtney, hello. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm so glad to see you. Welcome. Welcome to the broadcast. I heard this was yeah. like one of your first uh, Instagram lives. Yes. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah. I know you're going to do really, really great. So um, I haven't said much, just a short introduction. So one thing I want to say to everyone out there, um, I hope you all have made some lifelong friends when you were in college. I have. I've known Courtney's mom, I mean, since I was like 18 years old. So it's been a long time, and so I was really happy to – see like the next generation of young leaders come through. So Courtney, tell us who you are and you know where you are. You don't have to say specifically where you are, but you know, <laughs> what region of the country. Um, so I'm in a suburb of Chicago, um, Palatine, Illinois. Um, and we um, started this, this project painting piece where we create peace poles um, to be displayed around um, my community and other communities around um, to encourage harmony and inclusiveness in um, daily life. And so that's basically like what a peace poll is. And we had a goal of having 100 peace polls by today, which is International Day of Peace. Um, and we actually have 200 almost exactly. Um, so yeah, it was kind of cool. It's very cool. So you know, when you and I were um, talking and putting this time together to talk, I really did not plan for this to um, fall on the International Day of Peace, but I was so super excited that we can make that happen. So um, what made you decide that you wanted to create this project or this organization, this painting piece? Like what motivated you to do that or inspired you to do that? So back in the beginning of the summer about um, – when a lot of the social justice protests were going on, I wanted to do more, but it was very difficult with COVID. I couldn't really like go out. It was very hard to um, be active in that way. And I felt like I wanted to do more. And so um, my uh, friend, uh, she runs, um, she's the executive director of Partners for Our Communities, which is a, um, a, an organization um, in my community, um, and Kathy Mellon, and she um, brought the idea of Peace Polls up to me and thought that I would be interested in it, and I was like, yes, like, let's do this, and we um, started making plans to have workshops, and we've had about 10 workshops now, and yeah, that was basically where it started. I love that. So, I mean, I love anything that deals with creating colorful things, uh, positive message and all of that. And I feel like from looking at your website and all of you should check it out, we'll make sure we'll put the um, link in the comment section here and hopefully you're going to um, follow Painting Peace Palatine. So, you know, 
you're a community leader now. I don't know if you've called yourself that or you, you or if you see yourself that way, but you are, you know, you are completely officially a community leader. And when you were getting people involved in the workshops and getting the word out about, you know, your Peace Poll project, how did you do that? Um, we started out small because it was, it was definitely very, with the restrictions in Illinois, you, know, you can't really have big groups and everything. At the time, it was very small, like 10 people. Um, and so we did, we just had, we reached out to friends who would be interested and put it on Facebook and, and um, reached out that way at first. And we started having workshops in um, the parking lot at Partners for Our Community. Um, and then we started to, you know, word spreads quickly. So people started hearing about it through friends. And then we created the website and um, the Facebook page, um, which started to get some uh, more people involved. And um, we also were published um, in an article um, in the Daily Herald um, in Chicago. So that really, lots of people heard about it from that. So we really got, that's how we got like double the amount of um, polls that we wanted was really through that. We, a lot of people wanted to do that. We've involved, the Palatine Police have done some. Um, we had a social justice workshop um, with teens and um, Harper College um, had one of their community service projects for students to do. Um, they wanted to, to have this as a project for them to do that's like COVID safe. And, um, and so they are doing that. And so we have 20 polls from Harper students that are going to be placed at elementary schools and junior high schools in our local district. So um, we've really just branched out every way we can. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I was getting like a little teary and a little goosebumps at how, I love how you said we started small, you know, people we knew, you know, reaching out and then I kind of started your you know, your momentum in the right direction and then social media, your website and really building things through community. And I think sometimes when people want to do something like this, put a project together, mobilize people, they think you have to have all the pieces figured out or everything mapped out or some huge plan. And I just love how you said, you know, one person came to you, inspired you, you and you, you know, you, your team, your group, everybody who's participated has really created a beautiful momentum and a, um, I think a prime example of how we need to be connecting with each other in, you know, these really important, creative and kind of like out of the box type ways, if you will. Like I myself love Peace Polls, always look for them in different places when I'm traveling. But when I received the um, information via Facebook about this, and I was like, oh, this looks so cool. And then looking through and everything and I'm like oh, I know this family and it's just like so exciting to you know see you as a young leader you know as someone who I've you know seen through your mom's information grow up into this creative person I've enjoyed you all's TikToks in COVID time so it's just been so fun to really see you take that creativity and spread it wider than you know just your home or just your small circle so you know, when you think about this whole thing from when you first began until today, you know, your goal day of having 100 peace polls made, but it's been 200, you know, what surprised you the most about, you know, creating, creating this opportunity, creating the workshops, getting the words out about peace polls? What has surprised you? Um, I think just in general, the how, like, how many people wanted to be involved, it was like a pleasant surprise. Um, and made me happy because it's something I'm passionate about and to see this many people passionate about it was really awesome and there's people who we didn't we just don't have enough polls um, to, to be able to provide and so that way um, there's still more people that I want to do it and so we're starting to say like okay maybe next season and um, and but the thing that like surprises me every workshop is the creativity that each person brings I mean we started we did ours, um, our pole, it's a six foot pole out front um, of our house. And we didn't really know what we were doing. We, we started out with some stencils. We're not very artistic. So we had some stencils and we're tracing things and it's kind of just, we, it wasn't very creative. It was creative, but, um, <laughs> but it wasn't 
some masterpiece, excellent work of art. Um, but to see people come into a workshop, a, a two hour workshop and just have a plan. Some people have a plan, some people don't. And they just start and make this gorgeous pole out of a white pole. It's like a plain white pole. And they make a beautiful piece of art that is, is about peace. And it's, it's each one so unique and it's really awesome. I love that. I love, so, you know, in my work, I'm always talking about we're all creative. We have different ways of expressing it. And I love how you say some people show up well-planned, some people kind of planned, some people no plan, but it's all beautiful. It's all okay. And the end result is a peace ball that, you know, that's gorgeous to look at. And so I know some people that are listening to the broadcast and who listen to the um, rebroadcast, you know, maybe you don't have a single family home, you know, we have people who are in, you know, major cities, like I think about my daughter, who's very interested in this, but she, you know, lives in New York. And, you know, you don't have your big yard and things like right. that. And, um, you know, we are living in a complex, we don't have like a big yard. What is a way that you can make a peace pole and have it just in the space that fits, you know, if you have a patio or a balcony or, you know, whatever the space is? I mean, a peace pole, it's, the thing that's so great about it is that it's not, like, one thing. You can make it out of anything. You can make it whatever height. I actually, um, after, after so many workshops and I've gotten so many ideas after, like, I hadn't made one. I was the first one to make one, so I didn't see all of these examples of, of amazing works. And so I kind of wanted to go back and make a new one, but we already had one. So I wanted to make one for my room. So I actually made one. It's a two, about two foot one. I actually have it here. It's, oh! um, and so it's kind of just, um, it fits perfectly like on a desk. You can make it out of any size, um, which is the, the beauty of it because I couldn't fit a six foot, foot pole in my room. Like that wouldn't make sense. And so you can really make it out of anything, however big, however small you want it to be. Um, and that's, that's the great thing about it is that you don't have to have a big yard to have a peace pole. Thank you. I, I, people are, I don't have enough space. I don't have enough this. And I'm thinking everything can be modified. I love you say that. I'm excited. I'm going to have to make one for my desk too. A peace pole. <laughs> I'm going to need one of those. Um, so, okay. You have a lot of great workshops, you know, listed on your website. And I know people can join um, online. Is that accurate? Yeah. You all yeah. And so, you know, if I want to get started and I want to do a, just a little more research or, you know, I'm not sure about it because some people, you know, they, they want to know a little bit more before they do a workshop, you know, what should they know about going into something like this or, you know, getting involved with painting a piece? I think it's, so it can be as small or as big of a project as you want it to be. It's really like, it's you just like how you can make it how big and how small you want it to be. Um, like the actual pole, you can make your experience with it that easy too. Um, we we have instructions on how to make your own and based on the supplies that you would need for like the basics versus um, the, the crazy amount of supplies you can use on it. People have made like mosaics on theirs and then some people just use pencil and draw something. And um, so just... I think just looking up different ways to go about that, um, especially like expenses wise, um, that's we, for our workshops, we um, paint the poles white and prime them first and cut them to the right size and um, bring them to the workshop so people only, and we'll, we provide the paints, we provide the brushes, everything, um, and they're reused um, each workshop. And so then people can um, just paint and then we, they leave it there overnight, and then we um, come back a few days later and put a deck sealant on it so that it can be put outside. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, at our workshops, we do all of that. Um, but if people want to make their own, um, you can use it out of any material. There's lots of instructions online. Um, and I think we might have an instruction, like, PDF on our website, too. Um, and if there's not one, we're putting one up. Um, it's a work in progress, but um, it's really in there's yeah, it's really easy if you just are creative about how you get your supplies and what supplies you use. You can make it really out of anything, um, and then that way it's easier. 
So, you know, this wasn't like in our um, list of questions, but I'm curious. So what year are you in school this year? Senior. Senior. Okay. So everybody hear this, you know, here's a 12th grader, you know, doing a huge impact, leading this community charge, which I think is going to, you know, permeate so many different areas. Like I think this, this web is going to grow because people are going to be excited about this. Have you um, been able to, now that school is like officially back in session remotely, have you been able to um, talk about moving this in any capacity to a school organization or a club or something like that? Have you discussed anything like that? I, it's been really hard because our school is so, um, they, they can't really have like meetings in school at all right now. Like it's very... Um, there's only four sports playing this like semester. It's very um, cut off. So we haven't done anything like that yet. Um, I think that could definitely be a possibility, hopefully next semester, if everything starts to get better with COVID. Um, but as of right now, it's more of a, of a community-based um, organization. But I, I hope there is a way this year to make it more of a school thing. But as of right now, it's just community. Understood, understood. And um, what are some ways we can, you know, connect this concept of peace polls and specifically today, the, the International Day of Peace? How can we connect that with, you know, awareness, um, social justice, and kind of keep that going, keep that momentum? Yeah, it's so the, the flexibility of being able to put whatever you want on your peace poll provides that outlet where you can put what you are passionate about and what you want to see changed in the world um, on your poll. And uh, there's, I mean, there's the amount of things that people put on their poll. It's amazing. Like they really, you can tell what they're passionate about. And the great thing about it is, is that it's, well, it's a temporary thing, but you can, you can move it, but it's a, a permanent thing where you can always see it. It doesn't only last one workshop. It's not a two hour experience and then you forget about it that it ever happened. Um, it's, it wherever you put it, it's always there as a reminder of what you're passionate about. It's a reminder to raise awareness about and to support those things that you are passionate about. And that's what I like so much about it is that it's always there to remind you. Like it's, it's harder to forget when everything goes back to normal and you forget about everything that had that you were passionate about before and the when you go back to school or work or um, your daily life it, it's easy to forget about um, the injustices in the world and so that way peace poll you can always be reminded of it I love that it's like a constant reminder and constant call to action but it's, yeah. and it's also beautiful you know it's you know a great visual tool oh, all the things that I love all the things that I love so Courtney, tell us um, the ways that, you know, you're watching this interview now or you're watching it later. How can we connect with or stay connected with Painting Peace? Um, so you can uh, go to our website, paintingpeace.weebly.com. Um, and there on there's updates. There's pictures from workshops. Um, there's um, a list of scheduled workshops for the future and um, different ways on how you can make your own peace poll. All of that information is on there. We also have a Facebook page. Um, it's Painting Peace is the name of the Facebook, Facebook page. Um, and there's also a link to the website on the Facebook page and a, a link to the Facebook page on the website. And um, our Instagram, which we, we, just, um, <laughs> we just created. So it's still a work in progress. We've only been doing this for three and a half months. So um, it's still we're we're growing and growing so um that's gonna start becoming a bigger thing um too and those are the best ways to stay connected and just to um when you if you make a peace poll take a picture with it or of it wherever it is and send it to our email that's on the website and we will put it on the website or the facebook page wherever you want to um be and then that way um you we can see the the growth it has um expanded to nationally too Awesome. And what are your um, plans today on International Peace Day? Any Anything special you're doing? Um, we were, so the, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. The International um, 
peace organization. Um, it's a it's an organization. It's on our website too. Um, a link to it, and you can get registered as a peace ambassador, which is really cool. And you can also, um, if you have an organization where there's a peace pool or something like that, um, you can um, register to be an international peace site. Um, and so that's really cool. We were supposed to. Um, to dedicate one of the peace sites to Partners for Our Community today, but scheduling got mixed up. So we're doing that this weekend, but, um, but it's, uh, we, we registered um, Partners for Our Community as a um, peace site, which was really awesome. Um, and I'm just, I, I posted on my Snapchat about International Peace Day, and we talked about it in school, actually, which was really cool, too. Um, and so just reminding myself of peace and encouraging that is mainly what I've been thinking about all day. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, you're doing an incredible job. You're doing an incredible job. And I have been so inspired by, you know, your project that's turned into a gorgeous movement. And, you know, I'm going to get involved too on a different level. So thank you for that. And, you know, really thank you for bringing the attention to it. And in a way that's very um, accessible for other people. You know, sometimes people want to get involved in things, but they feel like there's too many hurdles. And mm -hmm. I think your organization, Painting Peace, does a really beautiful job of just showing us all how a simple, thoughtful, mindful, and creative task can bring about so much awareness, um, reminders, call to actions, and really can, you know, connect a community. It's, it's really powerful. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> so I encourage everybody, I'm going to um, put in the comment section, you know, ways that you can connect with the painting piece and see all the work that Courtney's leadership is doing and, you know, support our young leaders. And if you have any other young leaders who are looking for a great project and don't know where to start, I definitely will point them toward painting piece because I think we can all be successful and encouraged and motivated. And Courtney, thank you so much. Thank you so much for making the time for this interview. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know our teens are so busy, so I really, really appreciate your time. Anything else that we need to let the people know? Um, I think we're, we covered it all. <laughs> okay, okay. I just want to make sure. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And, of course, um, leave any questions in the comments. We will be checking them, and we can get your answers, your questions answered, and hopefully – see down the road your beautiful peace bowls that you make and that um that courtney will be able to post on painting piece so thanks again courtney thank you okay have a great day <laughs> bye bye